All right, Van Mang, welcome to the Dave Portnoy Show with Eddie and Company. Another show. Dave, let's talk about Roma before we get started here. Most guys have tried different ways to last longer in bed, but thinking about baseball it doesn't always work. The folks at Roman Online Men's Health Company, they're changing the game with Roman swipes. Dave, you've had a nice week down there in Miami. I know you've been swiping away, trying to get the <laughs> juices flowing longer. Eddie. What? You like the Roman? Yeah, you, you, hard dick. It's a yeah. nice hard dick. So, you know, Dave, it does help with the hard dick, but these swipes, they make you last longer. You yeah, know, it's hard. Yeah, well, it's all related, Eddie. It's the circle of life. All right. All right. I just want to make sure everyone knows they're related. Roman swipes clinically proven to last longer. They're effective, easy to use and fast acting, but they don't require a prescription. Roman can ship the swipes to in discreet unmarked packaging and each swipe packet is small enough to hide in your wallet for whenever you need it. They're super easy to use. Just take the swipe out of the packet, swipe it on, let it dry. You're good to go. That's it. To get your hands on these, all you got to do is go to GetRoman.com slash Dave. And you get your first month of swipes for just $5 when you choose a monthly plan. That's GetRoman.com slash Dave. Go get some Roman. All right, Dave. Quite the changeup of weeks from hanging out with me, Elio, hot dog hats, uh, everywhere you go. I mean, you're in videos. You got stacks of cash. You're in TikToks. What's going on? So I'm in Miami. Uh, and, yeah, this is kind of my fault because I don't like the image that necessarily it portrays in, in these said TikToks, but there's a girl I know that I've known for, I don't know, a couple of years. I've known probably longer than a couple of years, but I've hung out with like periodically. Um, New York Post is saying I'm dating her. I'm not. This is like an article like Dave Portland is dating like former Eagles cheerleader. Um so she, I came to Miami. She happened to be in Miami. So it wasn't like we planned it, but I saw she was here. I'm like, hey, what's up? I'm in Miami. So are you You're like, yeah, all right. Want to hang out? Yes. So she was here celebrating her younger sister's like 21st birthday. So she was with her. Like the girl I'm with, I, I people can be like, is she age appropriate? Yeah, I think she is. She's like 25, 26 years old. That's fucking age appropriate. So we hung out and these girls, we're fucking on their phones 24 seven, just love taking like snaps, me, everything. And it's like, I was actually just texting with the girl. I'm like, your, your sister made me look like a fucking jackass. And she's like, I know I made her take down the TikTok. It's like, and I felt like a dick being like, Hey, put your fucking phones down. Like there's literally a scene in this. It's a movie. It's a fucking movie. I don't do shots, Eddie. I'm not a shot guy. Um, like occasionally I'll do it, but like, you know, if I start doing shots and God forbid, I want to maybe have intercourse later in the night, my dick won't work if I do a ton of shots. So I just don't do shots. So like they bought shots at the table. There's one in front of me. I'm like, ah, no, I'm not, I'm good. And it's like, it's my 21st. Can I just get for my memory? Like if you pretending to do a shot, it's like, fuck it. If you want it, it's like you're, I know your sister fine. And that's like everywhere. So it, it's fake life. The whole, the whole thing was fake life like yeah i have stacks of money we went to a strip club like but it's miami like gold rush and 11 are places you go out so it's like i i had it i gave it to them i did do that's the only thing i spent less than like a hundred dollars on the entire weekend like people want to fucking chirp me i know a lot of people tables are free dinners are free like I was hanging out with a girl I know, and it was her friend's 21st. So all the, this imagery of like, I pay for, I don't do fucking dick. I'm in demand down here, Eddie. Obviously. I mean, we've the gone through day, that. There's a, that gossip website. Like literally, I almost wanted to send to the New York post. Like, where is it? Um, is this the one on Instagram? That's always posting shit about you. Yeah. Like, okay. so. Well, the, well, this is so this is the girl I know. We're pulling up the page six right now. This is the girl that I've hung out with before. She's from Philadelphia. These girls, I guess they're Delco. So they like Delco girls like doing it. But so this is the girl I know. And this she's like 25, 26. And it was their younger sister's 21st birthday. So it is not nearly as like scandalous a thing as people are making it out to seem. But page page six, by the way, page six. Asked for a quote about this. They went to our PR team and our PR team sent it to me. And they're like, what do you want to say about this? And I, I gave them a quote. I said, like Jacqueline, our PR said, this is from page six. 
I wrote, Dave is a grown single man who fucks. They didn't use that. No, Jacqueline was like, I was like, I wish you sent that quote because they said no comment in this article. And she's like, I thought you were kidding. I don't kid. I, I'm not sending you a fake quote. It's like, are you dating this girl? No, I'm a grown single man in Miami and a girl that I know is in Miami. I hung out. But then at the same point, like they say I'm dating this girl that on that other website, there's, let me pull it up. So just to get it spotted, this is under two things spotted Scott Disick at Komodo in Miami. No Amelia this time around right below it. Dave Porton. I spotted it at a restaurant that, that shall be not named in Miami with a brunette, brunette girl having a romantic Valentine's day date. So like, what is it? Am I dating this blonde girl or am I out on a romantic date on Valentine's day with her brunette answer? I was out with both those girls. They're <laughs> non-related, and I'm not dating either of them. Okay, because that one says, just to be sure here, so it says her name, Shannon Shannon St. Clair, yes. Yes, so she's not 21. No, Shannon St. Clair is like 25 or 26. Okay, so they got that That's wrong. the one that like, Dave was getting handsy. Yeah, I was getting a little handsy. My hands fucking wandered. I was fucked up in Miami. Like, did maybe I, at some point, grab her buttocks? At a strip club, maybe is that handsy, but I'm not dating her. It's kind of handsy, but you know, you could it's do a that. fucking strip club. Yeah, yeah I'm. Yeah. Listen, people think I'm like not this crazy party person. Like I'm a wallflower. Well, you see me at clubs. You pay for the seats. I didn't even pay for the seats. Oh, Eddie. but like, but that's my point though. Is like you just sit there because you like the seats. You're not yes. like, yeah, I need the best but table. I need like, the this best girl bottle. in the TikTok has a picture of these Jordans that I guess are like <laughs> rare and they're like Dior and they're like 15,000 or $20,000 for a pair of sneakers. I don't know where the fuck she got those sneakers from. I had nothing to do with it. I'm not, you know what that New York, I've had a lot of hit pieces written about me, Eddie, in my day, a lot of hit pieces, that New York post article. That was the worst hit piece. The worst thing, the worst printed word ever about me was in that article. Why? Because it kind of made you out to be like a sugar daddy kind of deal? Well, it no, that didn't. That said I was dating the girl. So that's different. Uh -huh. But did you you didn't read the article? I read that there was 21 year old girl, Shannon, you guys were there. She's and... not fucking 21. She's 25. Who cares? And if she that's the problem. The other girl was turning 21 and everyone's like, oh, blah, blah, blah. And by the way, I don't care. It's I'm more like I'm not buying sneakers. Like people are just going to have to get with the fact that I have a couple things going for me that girls of all ages like a I'm fucking hilarious. B I'm fucking rich. C I'm fucking hilarious. So deal with that, those things. But no, here's the mean thing. Portnoy, 43, was married to Renee Sathwaite from 2009 to 2016. Since then, according to reports, this is he's only had one other serious relationship with fitness instructor Jordan Hamilton in 2017. Whoever wrote that had an axe sign, Eddie. That's fucking diabolical to put that in the article. Put those two names, first of all, next to each other. Diabolical. To say that was a serious relationship die a fucking bollicle who wrote that they should be i've had so many mean things that is the that is the biggest hit piece fucking mean shit there is no comparison to what i where i am right now in my life and how i'm handling my life to what it was during that brief that was after like my marriage ended i was a fucking idiot i'm not like that now i'm very t i'm here like i'm not showing up doing pizza reviews and getting everything. I'm very organized, very focused on work. So I go out in Miami and a, and a pretty girl who I know is like, let's hang out. I'm bringing my 21 year old sister. It's her birthday weekend. What am I going to say no to that? Of course, I don't care Would I prefer. She's not fucking making it seem like I was like fucking her and buying her shit. Yeah, I would, but whatever people say Wait, a lot of things. I don't understand though. So you're saying like the hammy one didn't count or you're saying that, that wasn't a serious fucking relationship. Well, it was, was pretty serious fucking relate. I dated her for like a month. She lived and ruined my fucking apartment. Fuck the soul cycle guy. All right. There's but a month relationship. There's one other and it wasn't her. But uh, listen, you know, months, a month could be five years. And that no, was uh, a month can't be five years. Dude, look at all the content that came out of the hammy. Well, shit. there's that a lot like of content. That's a month. lot of content. Yeah. There's like fucking that's not a serious fucking relationship, Eddie. 
Fuck maybe, you, Eddie. <laughs> I'm sorry. You, I, I think you're down. I, listen, I think you, I, I understand your point, but I think you're downplaying it just a little bit just because of the publicity it, uh, it garnered. Is that fair? No, I created the publicity. I have no problem. It's like she fucked a soul cycle, dude. We know we all know the history of that. But to say it was a serious relation, what are you kidding me? Well, it's been the only person that people really know and have a face and a name to. Yeah, right. But there's I'm telling you, I, there was a girl I dated for like, I don't know, six, six months or something that like we just didn't put on social media. All right. That's yeah, that, and that's what I, I guess that was my next question is if there was someone longer. So there obviously was. Um, so so were you did you feel bad like being like, oh my god, these girls keep taking videos? Like in the I back felt of bad. Head. It's like I know the sister pretty well. Be I didn't want to be like a dick. Like, can you stop doing that? Like, I didn't know. So she, the girl who put the TikTok thing on took it down. Her sister yelled at her. I'm like, where were you beforehand? Like, why, like, like you're there. It just, I, I don't know. I, I felt, I felt awkward. I literally at dinner, it's like, I look like a pimp because when we were hanging out and it's like, all right, it's this birthday crew. And I liked them. They're all nice. They're cool girls. They're like Philly Delco girls, but they are young. They were her friends and I'm hanging out with the sister, but it is what it is. What's the difference between this and the other one where you were on like a, an actual tabloid thing and they cut gas out and you're with like eight girls then. That you wasn't know? eight girls and bald headed gas was there. Okay, so just the one. But this guy was I knew the, those difference. girls. We didn't know. Gaz knew those. Gaz invited those girls. There were I think four of them. So four girls, two guys go out to dinner, hang out one night. That's Miami's Miami. Like I come down here because I know a ton of people. But if they're not around, it's like I know this girl's like, what are you doing tonight? Let's hang out. That it's really as simple as that. Comparatively, girls versus guys that you know down there. What's like the breakdown? Oh, I know guys, but like a lot of them work in the industry so they're like working at night and doing stuff that just people visit miami like again i didn't know that shannon was going to be in miami till she was in miami i know her just like it's pretty there's not it's not too complicated like, hey you're in miami i'm in miami what are you doing tonight oh let's hang out you want me down there on friday now, of course he wants to come down on friday he's been <laughs> doing i mean can you Pipe up and back up my version of events. That even though you're in the fucking room, Eddie's trying to paint me like some fucking lunatic. I do not. I'm not. I don't. I people like people think I'm like bribing these girls. It's so insulting. It's like I didn't pay fucking a cent. I didn't pay for dinners. I didn't pay for tables. I didn't pay for anything. Nothing. That's what it's like every time we're out down there, though. Like just just sometimes people have cell phones and they're crazy like that was, and some most of the time they're not. Correct. No, I'm on the same page with you for that. My my thing where I was a little against you was for you to say that the hammy thing was just a blip in the radar. Is a little, that was a fucking blip? What are you talking about, Eddie? It was a big blip, Dave. It was That's a big because blip. it was content because she fucking opened her legs and had a soul cycle guy fuck her, and I made a big thing of it. Where's page six, Dave? It's content. But the, you can't put you like pay. You throw that last serious relationship. Come on. Just You're stick to my new fake it. girlfriend. Just stick to my new fake girlfriend who I'm apparently dating. All right, so who confirm not, no no girlfriend right now. Confirm no girlfriend. Can I, the Friday night, that Valentine's Day thing is is true. I was out with a brunette on Valentine's Day night. So where's how am I dating anybody? I went out to dinner, and that wasn't really Valentine's Day either. That was actually a girl. For all you, you're going to hate this. All the people are going to fucking hate it. But a super hot girl, like, I fucked me at the table the night I was with them and slid into my DMs, and it was like, hey, let's go out. So I'm like, all right. You're just going to have to deal with it. People are just going to have to deal with it that you can say what you want about my age. You can say whatever you want about this, that girls are into funny, rich guys. That's how it works. Dude, no. Like, people who say that, they would be doing the same exact shit so I, I don't understand that at all. I really don't. Well, my, it makes it look like I'm paying. I, being a sugar daddy and like buying a girl, a 21-year-old girl, $15,000 like Dior sneakers and shit. That's stupid. I learned that. Hammy is an idiot. I haven't. I don't think I've bought like a girl a gift or like paid for anything besides like, hey, want to hang out? Like if someone I know, I'll be like, yeah, I can get your flight. Like if I know the girl, but I don't like presents, gifts, money. I don't do that shit. What are you crazy? I think more people are like, well, why, why don't you just bring a couple buddies? Like why isn't there a couple dudes? You know, I like, have, what do you I have one friend 
that I could go with. And he's bald and he wears his baseball hat all the time. And he is with me a lot. And occasionally you need a fucking break because I was like, if I want to relax, he's not the guy. But, you know, when it's Friday, you see these Instagram stories hitting the web. You got to get fucking Paul on a red eye there instant. And that's how you got to take care of these. But <laughs> I, I almost like I was literally being like, I'm going to do more of like a chill date, not be like out in the like if you go out with Paul, you get home at fucking the sun's coming out. And like, I don't always want to do that. I want to just chill, go to dinner, go home. Now, I obviously I got myself into a girl's 21st birthday party. That wasn't like when I had the X's and O's on the chalkboard before the weekend. That wasn't it. I was coming from fucking Detroit. I was exhausted. I was getting over. I thought a case of COVID. I didn't have it. I'm like, I just want to chill in warm weather. I looked at the weather. I didn't know I was going to be embroiled in a 21 year old's birthday party what's uh what's like the conversation like at a 21 year old birthday party eddie let me rewind and tell you again that the girl that i know and have known for a while is 26 so i know i know she's different the 21 year olds what are they talking about they're getting the time their lives because they're getting a plus treatment everywhere because i have connections in miami now, were you at all tempted to go four hours uh, north in Florida to the uh, the Super Bowl party? No, I really didn't feel good. No? What did you think? What did you uh, – I don't think you've, like, said anything publicly unless if you did that Davey Day Trader about – the throwing of the Lombardi Brady was piss hammered, a little, little jealous or what? Would well, you no, I mean, he, he, you, again, the way he treated the Super Bowl trophy, you won't see that in new England. We respect the trophy, but you know, good for him. Good for him. He, he, you know, it's crazy. It's bittersweet. It is bittersweet. Like the next day, it was so tough watching TV and all the stuff. I want him to be a Patriot. I want that to be our Super Bowl, but I'm happy for him. But you know, we got to win one now without them. It's got to right. hurt you to lose a classic, though. You know, like there, there's classic videos throughout the years. Him walking out hammered is a classic video that, like, does not belong. Like, where, like, the, the, the bad boys for life with Gronk, like, that's one of the best videos ever. Yeah, no, uh, they tried to recreate it. It didn't work. Yeah, like I said, it is. It's all bittersweet. I didn't really pay much attention to it because I I can't I'm happy for him, but it's not like I'm enjoying it. You don't it it it, it does hurt. Did you catch shit? I saw Fifty Cent was catching shit about the party. Oh, like COVID and shit. Yeah. No, I nobody said anything to me. I mean, What's I'm I got my own issues going on here. I got my own party issues going on. And then uh, we 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 mentioned this. We could just keep it going now. We mentioned this when we were on the stream, or maybe before the stream last weekend. Frankie Munez, he wants to work for Barstool. Have you brought this up anywhere yet? No, I yeah, he he sent me um he did send me a DM, I believe. Let me look. What a what a out of the out of the left field. Frankie, unless I made this up. Seems like a weird thing. Frankie Munez 4, 446,000 followers. I've got so much going on that I don't even know what's going on. As a publicist, can I yeah, February 7th, 9, 11 a.m. Can I work for Barcel? I'm not sure what you need me to do, but I'm a quick learner. Frankie Munez. Should I write back? Just be like, well, what do you, he could be, could he be the new Frankie? Could, does he, does he know how to work a camera? How old is Frankie Munez? He's got 446,000 followers. What do you do now, Frankie? I would guess like 34. 30, I, I just left him on red. You didn't even respond to Frankie Muniz. That's kind I, of fucked up. What do I say? What What do you do, Frankie? What can we do? What's can he, we... Malcolm in the middle, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Are you responding? I don't know what to respond. <laughs> Frankie Muniz. Well, I'm looking him up. So old. He's 35, so I was pretty close. It's a little old for us, right? Well, if you could do something. What did you do last week? Uh, everyone was talking about pizza. You got a lot of retweets on the New Haven capital of the world um I, that michigan kids video saying we go where portnoy goes is pretty fucking funny that was fucking hilarious <laughs> we go where portnoy goes yeah so that i mean that was great i i knew that was a big video frankie uh freddie the pizza man 
Uh, and you can't even get in there now. I've rearranged that entire place's career future path. Um, so what about it? I was just I was just bringing it up. Like that's something oh. where there's so much fucking debate. There's so much hostility. Oh, New Haven's really, the best. Yeah. New Haven's yeah. the best uh-huh. pizza in the United States. Anybody who says otherwise is a moron. Now listen, I don't. I'm not from New Haven. It's not like I'm partial to New Haven. I didn't grow up on New Haven. People will send, well, you haven't had this place. You haven't had that place. I've had it all, baby. I've, I've been everywhere. So this is an unbiased take of somebody who has eaten pizza in pretty much every single city in the United States. And I know every good pizza place, New Haven has the best pizza in the United States. The best, my favorite place is there, Sally's. Everyone's like Pepe's, Pepe's, Pepe's. There's not even the best one on the fucking street, never mind the city. Pepe is good. Sally's a thousand times better modern bad pizza new haven is generally would be the best pizza in most other places city new york has great pizza duh they have a ton of it they have a ton of it but for a concentrated small little area new haven it's it that's the answer i won't debate it it's a fact that's that's exactly what i wanted so thank you we needed to get the official the official statement rather than just a tweet uh you ever went at mcdonald's what was with that uh, and you faced kind of some backlash no or what backlash from who well, some people were like, oh, you were mean to the kid. Because mean. if you don't know the story, McDon- some kid from McDonald's DM'd you. was like, hey, we're going to send you a free Big Mac or something. They're basically like, hey, we have this new thing coming out. Like, we'll give you coupons and like a fucking happy meal. If you put like eight Instagram stories and blog, it's like, who are you talking to? Like, you think you're talking to the dog? You think you're talking to Nate dog right now? You think you're talking to Dante's friend, Dante the Don, kid who like fucking embarrassed himself at some blackout show and tried to make up for it by giving me like McDonald's coupons? Like who? Like you, I get a happy mail for millions of dollars worth of paid advertising. Are you crazy? And I sometimes would catch me at the right moment. I used to do this all the time. There's nothing I hate more than like, and that person was trying to do their job. So I'm not mad at them. I just thought it's funny. It's like, wake up. What I think there was, uh, cause this happens kind of a lot and a lot of, I feel like a lot of content people get duped by it. Right. The lazy oh. recliner story from way back in Milton. Dave, do you remember that? <laughs> oh yeah. That's the best lazy boy. I used to blog these. I used to do the entire email lazy boy. Did I don't even think they want to give me a free lazy boy. They wanted me to sit in a lazy boy. We come to a store or something and like talk about it. I didn't not even send it. So I went through a whole email exchange with the lazy boy people being like, well, if I'm going to come to the store and sit on it, I'm going to need you to like put a TV on in the store so I can watch a movie. And they're like, okay, we can do that. And I'm like, well, I only watch movies with movie theater popcorn. So you're going to have to go to a movie theater and get me authentic movie theater popcorn for me to watch in a movie in your store sitting on the lazy. And they went, I mean, they were going to do it. This, it was like George Costanza going to the fucking Hamptons. It's like prickly Pete. It's like, how far are we going to go in this lie? Because clearly I'm just fucking messing with you now. Yeah, I want a fish tank in the left corner. I want this. <laughs> no, no, yeah, I don't know. Uh, they do do ads with Barstool, though. McDonald's? Yeah, granted, uh, it's a lot. Listen, it's Good a lot them. different. I saw the communications director, actually, of McDonald's, like, commented on it. He's like, it's just someone trying to do their job. We'll be better. I wasn't, like, I didn't think I was mean at all. I just thought it was, like, I was pointing out, are you nuts? Like, you're you're literally giving me a happy mail for, like, close to seven figures of advertising. What Like, why would I do that? And then I saw you quote tweeted Vlad. He was going on some show and you asked me yeah. to come on this show. Anything nothing no. on that? Or? He's too big of a puss puss to do that. That would be big if you have Because I'm on. not going to, he, there's nothing he can say that he's right about the CEO of Robin Hood. Nothing. Other guys may play nicey with them. I'm not, I'm not Mr. Nice guy. Yeah. Fair enough. I mean, I, I wish, I wish there was some way to get him on, but I, me too. I really doubt it. Uh, before we continue, Dave, I'm going to bring back an old segment they used to do in the blog. Uh, but before we get into that, let's talk about Helix Sleep Mattress. Uh, Dave, I got mine. I know you got sent one as well. This thing's fucking comfortable. Well, it's a bed that you sleep on and you, you just, you know, lambs jump over. You count sheep. They jump over the fence. One sheep, two sheep on a Helix mattress. Yeah. And what's cool is they give you a quiz. Four sheep. Six sheep. Are we doing twos or what? Oh. 
uh, he looks she, uh, sleep. They have a quiz. So I took a quiz. They're like, Hey, it took two minutes and it, it gives you what's your body type would match. And it really like gives you a perfect mattress for you based on your sleep preferences. So really, I don't know why you'd buy a mattress without having all that information. So with Helix, you're getting all of that because it's the perfect way to sleep. Everybody's unique and Helix knows that. So they have several different mattress models to choose from. They have soft, medium, firm uh, mattress is great for cooling you down. If you sleep hot and even a helix plus mattress for plus size sleepers uh, helix is awesome but you don't need to take my word for it helix is what was awarded the number one best overall mattress pick of 2020 by gq and wired magazine all you got to do is go to helix sleep.com slash dave take their two minute sleep quiz and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life they have a 10-year warranty and you could you could get it to try out for 100 nights risk free once again, Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash Dave. That's helixsleep.com slash Dave, up to $200 off and two free pillows. I mean, that's a great deal. We're a great uh, deal. I'm pumped. You, you, Dave Portnoy in the mattress game is always good. And they're on BFFs too, right? No, did I make that up? I thought I saw them last week. They weren't on this past episode. But they were on last week, so they're doing they're doing both. Okay. So they're doing great things. Eddie. Yeah, it's raining the, here. Not to like make people pity me, but it's raining in Miami. Fuck you. That's the only nice place in the country right now. Do you realize that? Bad weather, other places, like everywhere else, like Texas. Really? I, I, I I've no, been here. Knew, you're I've been here right? a week, and it's been like eighty and sunny every day except today. Yeah, it's fucking miserable here. Well, what's it? What's the weather there? Right now? Yeah. Like one. Oh, yeah. It's 80 more degrees here. Yeah, yeah. Good math. Good math. Um. All right. Bringing it back an old segment. Boston Love Letters. Oh. You used to blog these all the yeah. time. So we're going to bring them back in podcast form. You ready? Sure. My roommates are unkind to my girlfriend. Well, well you, this is my knee-jerk reaction. Usually I gave some thought to these. Well, yeah, it needs your reaction. Okay. We're a podcast, right. new, okay. new medium. All right. So it's if people don't know, Boston.com, people send in questions. Meredith Haas Goldstein. Okay. That's the name of the lady. And Dave would give his I, that. I don't know if you get canceled for that, but I don't think so. I have a grudge against, I don't know if that's who wrote still if we're doing it, but she does Boston.com love letters. And I hated her because she came to a Barstool event and ripped it. Before I ever said anything, she's like, it's all ugly bros and like it sucks. And so I don't know if she knows I knew that, but Grudge Dave knew it. And Grudge Dave just was like, never forgave, never forget, never forget, never forgave, never forgive, never forget. I think she's still doing it, but I'll tell yeah, you. Paul Paula probably no more. Um, all right. Boston love letter. Here we go. First one on the show. My roommates aren't kind to my girlfriend, so much so that she doesn't want to come over anymore. They make the sort of toxic masculine comments that you might expect. She can't be here. It's bro time. Hey, man, come spend time with the boys. But beyond that, they virtually ignore her presence. They aren't kind to her at all, and she has told me she's had enough. I have tried talking with them multiple times, asking what's wrong with me having any girlfriend over, especially when she wears masks and is not exposing herself to others, but they act like nothing is wrong. When my girlfriend told me that she doesn't want to come over anymore, I was heartbroken. I don't know how to remedy this situation when I've tried multiple times to get them to voice what's wrong. Now she feels neglected because I can't invite her over anymore. Even though I still make lots of time for her doing different types of dates and such, what do I do? Sign frustrated, Dave. Frustrates a loser. Anybody who puts into their love letter, she wears a mask when she comes over. So she's being like taking care. You're a fucking loser. So worry less about everything else in your life and worry about why you're like, hey, she's wearing the mask when she comes over. The mask has nothing to do with it. You're a loser and your girlfriend's probably a loser because she only dates like losers don't get non losers. So that's why your friends, they don't like you and they don't like her because you're a loser. It's just a lose, loser situation. Who would ever in that letter be like, she wears her mask, you're a loser? Well, maybe, I don't know. I haven't been reading uh, this woman a lot, but maybe it's this thing where she always is a caveat, like, oh, maybe they're uncomfortable because they it's COVID, you know? It, it could be something like that, where it was just like a like a disclaimer. She does wear that a mask. thunder? No, I don't. Scary. Hope you're okay. 
Um, scary. All right. So loser, he's a loser. She's a loser. Um, we haven't explained that picture. Uh, Kareem, Michelangelo, whoever, can you pull that up real quick? You see it? Yeah, I see it. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I'm eating pizza. I think, so I think that was from one of the first pizza reviews, maybe town spa. Um, Why am I eating it like that? <laughs> I want to say that was during the pizza burrito thing. And you were just like, I'll like, I'll be here all day. Like one of those kind of questions, like pictures, like I'm just going to be pounding fucking pizza to win this contest. Okay. Yeah. I don't, I, I I've seen the picture, but I have no idea. Like the context. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's, that's explained that picture watch it on YouTube or on YouTube. They port on show that in company YouTube. If you're just listening, make sure you go watch it. You can see the picture. You can see the love letter. And uh, I could see a lot more. Uh, I told you we've been doing these drafts, Dave. I kind of want to incorporate it a little bit here. Uh, we did a reality TV one, me, the Chicago guys, and Rhea. I'm going to name off five males. You tell me which is the best reality personality. Like, who personifies reality TV? Okay. CT, the uh, CT, Johnny Bananas, Flavor oh, So Flav, I, I, I nailed it. Dog, the bounty hunter. Okay, so, all right, well, that's one. One for CT. Female. Snooki, Kim Kardashian, Chris Jenner, Lauren Conrad, Kristen Cavallari. Read the girls again. Best, at best, best exemplifies reality TV. Yeah, Snooki, Kim Kardashian, Chris Jenner, Lauren Conrad, Kristen Cavallari. I think I gotta go Snooki. Host, Chris Harrison, Ryan Seacrest, T.J. Lavin, Joe Rogan for Fear Factor, and Jeff Probst. Jeff Probst, best to ever do it, period. All right. Villain, Spencer Pratt, Richard Hatch, Simon Cowell, Heidi Montag, Farah Abraham. Simon Cowell. Moment, the note from Jersey Shore, chicken or tuna from uh, Jessica and Nick Lachey, uh, Johnny Banana's backpack, she bangs by William Hunger, Susan Boyle's first audition. She bangs by William Hung. All right. So we got CT, Snooky, Jeff Probst. But I also think you left out an iconic early reality moment when Chris and Cavallari is Steven. Steven. That, that, <laughs> that was iconic. That wasn't there. Uh, obviously, Johnny taking the money. I don't know. You were probably done with the challenge by then, but that was big. But that was those that was a draft. So you took two of mine. So I'm happy about that. Which ones? I had CT and Jeff Probst. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Just a good way to kind of cross over. Um, all right, we're going to do some inside bar stool. But first, got to talk about Roback. I'm wearing the hat right now. Dave, you're a big fan of Roback, right? Of course. How could I not be? It's one of the best brands that advertises with us. Good shit. Even your hat looks good. Before I even knew it was Roback, I'm like, oh, Eddie's hat's sharp. There we go. Roback Activewear. The guys over at Roback have been sending us the performance polos, quarter zip pullovers, and tees for a while now. And I'll be honest, the quality is just top-notch. Best fit and best feel. Occasionally, you'll see something, someone rocking a quarter, rowback Q-zip hat. Uh, rows a Q-zip or a hat, excuse me, with a dog logo, and just kind of give them that subtle nod because you know they get it. Rowback's quarter zip pullovers, and they're soft and they're comfortable as it gets. No one does quarter zips like Roback. They're just top quality. Uh, pick up one, and your wardrobe will improve faster than GameStop stock. I like that. That's a nice little wrinkle in the ad copy here. And Roback makes hands down some of the best face masks we've ever seen. They are double layer adjustable and have the little nose wire so your glasses won't fog up. That's key. Uh, that's probably the worst part for people with glasses. As long as we need to keep wearing masks, you might as well be comfortable and look good. So go check out Robacks. Use code Dave on Roback.com for a generous 20% off through the end of this week. That's spelled R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com. That's 20% off all polos, Q-zips, vests, hoodies, and tees with code Dave. They just dropped the new Q-zip. Go check it out, Roback.com. Like Dave said, the hat looks sharp. So go definitely go get in on some Roback. And, uh, yeah, let's do some inside bar stool. Uh, Jose Canseco still going on Twitter. I don't know. Do you know we're getting investigated by like the boxing commission? I saw that. Is it uh, Michigan so only, right? I don't know. I mean, because they, I guess it's because I said he took a dive. Like I tweeted, like, and it looked like he took a dive. I don't know how investigated. It's like, what, what, what is there? 
what are you investigating? <laughs> like, it's pretty black and white what happened. Billy came at him. He decided he wanted no part of it and didn't get up, but he wasn't hurt. Whether he had a shoulder injury, it's like we didn't know. It's like that's boxing, baby. So I don't I, know. It's funny. We, we've been kicked out of Kentucky, that commissioner, and now we're getting this. It's crazy, though. Just crazy. As far as Jose, of course he wants to try to make it seem like he, he wants a rematch. He, wants, he must think we're the dumbest people in the world. Like he wants to get another million dollars to fall down. Is Penn like worried about it? Have you had a no. conversation with them? No. no. Not that I'm aware. I saw it that it was like on some type of Michigan site that they're like, oh, this is gambling's new and we really don't need yeah, these types there's, of things. There's some real losers in the gambling industry who resent us and our success and our no fun loser fucking losers who hang on everything we say. And they'll probably quote tweet this, but they're, they're the worst humans like there are people who would be like they're misleading the public with Dan's uh, can't lose parlay. They're telling people can't like that's how stupid these people are. Yeah, it was very it was it was very much negatively barstool slanted. But I mean, welcome to the club. Back of the line, baby. Back of the line. Slanted. PFT versus Rovell was talked about heavy early in the week. Did you ever get in there? Did or did that? Uh, get to you? PFT told me. I mean, Ravel's such a worm. Like I, I honestly. I think he would have done it. He said he won $2 million. I can't stomach it. Even if we made 10, there's something about Ravel giving him $2 million that just, I couldn't stomach it. It was never something I took seriously. I saw Ravel at one point be like, my people talk to Barstool. Listen, the fight game goes through me at Barstool. I have sign off on whoever fights. I'm the promoter. I'm the guy. It was never an option. He never talked to me. His agents never talked to me. Ravel was never in consideration. I could not fathom making that guy relevant. He's a worm. You could never do a Ravel fight without fans, though, because the boo that would ensue would be all time. He he would have to take us, as I say, never do it. I would like strict rev. Nah, I couldn't. Like, there is a part of me who wants to see him get beat up. But he'd be relevant. We He needs relevancy. He has none. We'd make him relevant, and I don't know. Like, it's different. Jose, it's like, like Jose was doing it for money. Ravel's a smart worm. Like, he knows everything he's doing. It's like he's a cheap, smart worm, and I couldn't imagine giving a cheap, smart worm $2 million. Yeah, because he knows he'd get smashed. I mean, you watch nope. that video game. Play it up. Yeah. Of course. He'd get destroyed. He's incompetent. But he'd probably fall down, not get up, take a real punch. And then in the end, he'd laugh with his $2 million. No Aided way. Money. Not going to let a smart worm beat me. I'd rather fucking die. Would you fight him? No. I can't throw a punch. My shoulder dislocated. He'd probably beat me. Recently again? If I throw a punch, my shoulder dislocated. Oh. I have fragile shoulders. I thought they were better now. No, never. Barstool Lenny, did you see Leonard Fournette? Yeah, just I tweeted saw that. that. Yeah. <laughs> Is there talks of bringing him on, or was that just like a random tweet? I think he or was what? just being funny. Yeah. <laughs> he's still in the league. Is he, is he retiring? No, he's still in the league. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I know he's on the box, but I meant, did he like retire? No. No, 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 no. Yeah. Uh, I saw you repost Troops' video and why he came to America. So like Barstool, that was pretty cool. Uh, can you kind of, I, I know you, we hired him. Were you into the hire? Like, how did we land on uh, him? Uh, I don't know who found him. Maybe Jen Simons or somebody, but I met him. They're like, Hey, meet this guy. We may be interested in him. And I liked him, but I, I was pretty, I didn't know he'd be as good as he is now, but I, I was aware of it, but I wasn't a heavy factor. I greenlit it is how I would say. And I assume you're pretty happy. Yeah, he's great. Know. Him and Zah are quite the tandem. Quite the tandem. And then who there, there we have a new new hire as well. I, like I said, I know you've kind of been out of the mix a little bit, but uh, Alyssa Amoroso, she's yes. in publicity. What do yeah, you, what I was do you in on that. Her? Yeah, I was very much in that. So it's a unique, she's kind of like proud body and like, you know, um, a, just a different, like I would say most of the girls that we have are like very, very, not, not that she's not, but it's like, super attractive and like it's a different it's it's a more everyday girl vibe to it um and it's different it's something we didn't have and she is very aggressive in terms of like promotion and understands the internet game and i had like alex cooper vibes in a way like very thoughtful in what she wants to do with her brand and it's a vertical we don't have so we assigned her you remember who brought her up to you or how did that come about she came yeah i found her 
Oh, you did? Yeah, she she emailed me. Oh, so that's that's always more interesting, right? Because usually you're not. Sometimes you're in on that, but yeah, it depends how it comes through. But it was like I thought it was very different. I thought her pitch and like what she brought to the table was totally different than anything we currently have. Mm, so you're high on her. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. I don't know if it'll work, but it was like this is somebody you have to take a chance on and give a shot to see if she can do it. All right, that's a very good endorsement. Have you been uh, in the loop about what's going on with Trista? Ben Simmons taking a lot of heat. Ben Simmons' sister chimed in talking. Shit. Trista said some basketball take, right? Like yeah. Ben Simmons would be like the 89th guard or something that yeah, you take in the league. Essentially, yeah. So that's all I saw. I saw her get roasted. She gets roasted for everything, so I didn't pay too much attention. Yeah, so I Ben Simmons' sister chimed in. She said she had eight units on Utah last night, so uh, just a lot going on with that. I know Gaz was in the fire. Um, no surprise. What do you mean but eight units? What are we talking about? Eight units. She said she had eight units on, against the uh, Sixers last night. Who did? Trista did. You see? Huh. Smitty with a shirt. I don't understand Smitty. I feel like Smitty thinks people just forget everything he says. Like he, I, he for sure has trash bills, uh, Ben Simmons before I know. And now he's like, probably has Smitty, Smitty's you want to trash somebody, trash him. But there is a, there is an argument where it's like, Hey, I could trash him. You can't, he's my guy. Right? No, I think so. Well, you're, that's what makes the world go around. We're entitled to our own opinions. Well, I'm just saying there's a Boston Chicago guy, like, you know, uh, but it's not like Simmons has been great. That's like, hey, I, if a uh, icon or somebody who is like really good for a long time in your city and suddenly does something bad, then you can maybe say something somebody else shouldn't. But Ben Simmons hasn't done dick. So it's unlike White Sox, Dave, hanging the drum that Tom Brady is not the best quarterback of all time. White Sox, Dave, uh, he started getting going there. Um but that's what I expect out of White Sox, Dave. Just total moron. I mean, we all know that. Um, Brandon Walker, pretty cool. He worked at WWE event. I saw the highlights. He thanked me, sent me a text. He thanked me. Um, I didn't write back. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, that was cool. I don't know how that came about. I don't know if Erica had anything to do with it or what, but cool. Why didn't you write back? Because time's money, baby. It's like, I, I don't know, like what? You're welcome. What good does that do? All right. Uh, listener emails here. Uh, gets yours in day port and I show at Barcelona. I read it, Eddie. Down. You read it. I'm not a social norm guy. Well, just I have to say, you're welcome. He says thank you. I gotta say, you're welcome. Why? I got better things to do. Hey, hey, I know you work hard, Brandon. Good job. Pass it along then. Tell him, hey, I know you work hard. Good job. Tell him next time you talk to him that Dave said that. What do you think that's a, a, a problem though? When people that I don't, don't respond. Know- not even just responses, but people don't generally know when you're happy with them or not. Well, you know if you're not, I'll put it that way. Correct. But you don't know if you're happy or if you're just like. Yeah, I, I, listen, it, people can certainly criticize that, that I'm not a rah rah guy. I've never been like a pat on the ass guy. You hear from me when you're doing bad as opposed to doing good. Is it good? You know, everyone probably has to be treated a little bit differently, but it's never been my style. I'm not somebody who needs that type of affirmation it's just never been something that i'm doing if you don't hear from me i'm very i'm generally means i'm happy with how you're doing but maybe it's good to keep people a little bit on edge maybe if you then you don't get complacent if you're like oh i don't know if he thinks i'm doing good then maybe you work harder i don't know but i've certainly heard that i should be nicer to people recently you've heard that i always hear it. not specifically recently i mean i've been out of the office so much yeah it doesn't seem like you're really are in tune with what's going on. No, I'm not totally in tune. I'm in tune with like my own world. And like, I'm in tune with obviously pushing the app and all the pen stuff. And I'm still doing like all my shit, the day trading and, you know, these podcasts and pizza and the things that I do, I'm not in the middle swirling around in the drama and the office is obviously still a bit different in the COVID era, the office. I, and I'm also still doing the Barstool fund every day. Like, so my days are filled they're just not as much like stirring the drink and getting people's faces and shit like that. Do you kind of think that maybe there's a potential here in 2021 or 2022 that you will give up cheap of content or 
Do you think you'll always be that? And you're just kind of well, like, the only hey, thing I- that's different is I'm more like stirring things up, but I always let people do their own shit. Yeah. But I guess as far as like, you know, green lighting shit and putting well, stuff, I'll together. probably still be involved in that. Yeah. Cause it, it, I don't know to me, I, I just thought it's like, it might just be Davy day trader gambling and just living your life. Because I think you're kind of at the point where you want to do that. Right. Live my life. Yeah. You know, no, not to go back. We, we, over the summer and everything that happened with Barstool, a lot of people I just sick of. I just had to get away from a lot of the people, you know, couldn't see them every day. It just fucking hated them. So it's, um, but I don't feel that way anymore, but I do feel like, do I really want to go back right now to one degree temperature in New York when I'm so busy with the shit I'm doing, especially the Barstool fund. It's like, I'm just going to be doing that anyways. So I can do it from anywhere. Are you staying out there for? No, this is my last week. I extended. I thought I'd be home. So I'll be back in New York next week. Gotcha. All right. I mean, it's not like I was fucking tiddlywing. I was in Detroit for like three weeks. No, no, no. I know. I know. But it's, but, but that's what I mean, where it's like, hey, you'll go do these launches, but then in between, like, what are you going to do in between? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's been fucking, I don't use, I can usually live in a lot of areas, but like to go, spend time in fucking new york city in a city that like cuomo's like brought to its knees that's closed and it's like you can't go out it's one degree out when i can have the means to do basically go anywhere i want and work just as effectively like why would i go back to new york fair enough uh like i said dave portner show at barstoolsports.com uh this one's from joe dave do you currently own a car if so how if so what kind and how is the bronco running in nantucket I have like 18 cars in Nantucket and none of them run, but I don't own like an everyday car. now. You just have a bunch of cars just sitting there. Yeah. I have like all these anti, I get, I buy like anti the Bronco. I have like a Woody. I have this old truck. They all suck. Damn. I didn't know you did that. Are you like, you're not like a car guy. No. And that's a problem, Eddie, because they get by these old cars. You got to be a car guy. You got to tinker. I don't tinker. So they just break and sit in my driveway. Yeah, I mean, that Bronco is sick. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at drives like an absolute piece of shit. <laughs> is, is it? I feel like it's is it a, is it a car place, Nantucket. They have like, the old cars. Those fit in like the um, Nantucket. The, the what do you mean is a car place? Like it's such an island. Like, I don't know. No, I, no, I, you got to you, you need a car. Oh, OK. All right. Yeah. I mean, you need a car. It's very much you need a car to get around. OK. Um, this one's from Josh. I know you had a love, hate relationship with him, but what's your current take on office manager, Brett? I don't know. Sounds like he's dead. I bet that's a shame. <laughs> well, I mean, he's just not on my radar. I always liked him. I, I, I always liked him as long as he wasn't doing anything responsibly for me. Like he seemed like a nice enough guy and he is a nice guy and friendly guy and people like him. He just, I couldn't enter like he was so bad at everything he did with me, but he's a nice dude. I wish him well. I hope he's alive and killing it. You just haven't thought about him in a while. No, it's not like I wake up and be like, what's the fucking floppy haired Brett doing? What about Buddha Ben? Did you do same, same miss, thing or I miss Buddha. <laughs> I do wake up. I'm like, man, I wish Buddha was here. <laughs> we might have to get him on sometime. Yeah, funny. no, I, I, I love Buddha. What a unique guy he was. I would have paid basically infinity dollars to keep Buddha. And he just wanted to do music videos, right? He just wanted yeah, to do yeah, something. Yeah, and he's now a sweatshirts and all his brands. So he's doing well, it looks like. But yeah, I miss Buddha. Like, I don't miss Brett Merriman. He's a dime a dozen. Brett Merriman made me the most dime a dozen human who ever lived. Buddha is a one in a gazillion. You can find a Brett Merriman in every bro corner in the store. There's a store of Brett Merriman's blowing their hair up. You're like, like just wearing sweater vests and fucking polo and wearing those shoes he wears and khakis. He's like so replaceable if I wanted to. Buddha Ben, good luck finding a Buddha Ben store. I mean, Brett Merriman, he, he used to tan his ankles. He could take a fucking lashing. He had some out there traits, I would say. <laughs> yeah. yeah right you used to fucking ream him and he would take it well from what i understand no he did he was a he was one of the all-time punching bags but deservedly so i mean he lost my italian clothes he booked a flight like the way he used to book flights was obscene it was obscene he would like his move used to be he would book you the earlier flight 
even if it had 10 connections and got in like seven hours later because it took off earlier. Like he could, there'll be like a 10 o'clock flight that has 19 connections and it would get you in like 40 hours after it took off. Or he could buy a flight that left half an hour later and was direct for like an hour. He'd buy the connecting because it left earlier. What type of idiot does that? And then what was Buddha's deal? I actually never met him. He just smoked weed and ate hibachi. Was that right? Yes. That, you nailed it. Love that. Um, is there, how, how's the week been? So this is week one without Kevin, your, your old assistant? Yeah. Uh, this is week one, day two. How are we doing? Uh, he's, day everything seems to be under control. I do have to get the name of that graffiti artist. Um, I don't know. I got to get that. But no, I mean, I'm sure he'll write back. He, there was no, I talked to him. We we're almost going to have him on. I didn't think we'd had to, but there's no ill will. He's just, I, I don't know what he decided to do, but he basically said, yeah, you, I nailed it. We just never clicked. And I think with COVID, I started, I, I think I started traveling a lot without him. I didn't have confidence. He could like film my pizza reviews. So there's never a reason for him to be like with me. Um, I was never overly comfortable and I don't think he was either. And he's like, yeah, that kind of sums it up. How many people have reached out to get in? Oh, there's a million. I haven't really looked that hard. I, I I don't know. I may do some conglomerate of Spider and Kareem. We'll see. All right. Next one's from Jim. Have you ever cashed in on the pen stock you bought on the side? And if you did, how much did oh, you sell? I own it. I haven't sold any pen stock. Ooh. We're holding. That's a true hold. Um, this one's from Sean. A few years ago, you announced on radio that you recovered the first copy of the Barstool Sports newspaper and every copy, and you were going to scan it, put it on the website on a weekly basis. You did it with the first edition. What happened? We haven't seen another one. I felt like there were so many fucking lawsuits sitting in those things <laughs> that I didn't want to put them back on the internet. They're just buried. It's just, I was say there's so many problematic, like, it's just a different era. So did I want to, like, open ourselves up to that? No. You're not even mentioning that. You talk about nowadays with photos and all I that I know, everything. Shit. That's what I mean, everything. Yeah. Damn. That's So you just have them stored somewhere then? Yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, this one's from Brian. This one's I was confused about too. Uh, what the hell is the bald wingman YouTube videos on the Barstool YouTube? Nobody ever explained it. It just exists there. I think it was an old ad buy. It was. It was some hair club buy. It was just an <laughs> ad. It's so strange. It says doesn't say barstool anywhere. There's just three random YouTube videos on our channel. <laughs> it's just bald yeah. wingman. Yeah, bald wingman. That that was like an ad. I don't know what it was for. And I want to say this was back in the day, yeah, five years ago. So you were probably involved with this. You ever choke right? up when you're trying to hit on a beautiful woman? Hey, it happens. These were like That's why you need scripted a guy like commercials, me. right? Yeah. Phil Brock, and I want to be your bald wingman. I don't even know Good. if I've ever seen the finished product. And it's easy this too. is not, I don't, am I in this? We'll no, nobody from Barstool's in it. Oh, track. I have no idea what this is. I thought. Because everybody knows. You always look better <laughs> standing know. next to a bald man. I have no idea what these are. <laughs> it's got 600,000 views on our YouTube. <laughs> I have no idea. I thought I was in it. <laughs> no, there's like three of them. And no one's, no one's in it. <laughs> I have no idea what these are. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a promo where you had a bald guy come in places to make you look better. I don't know. <laughs> if you don't know that, I assume uh, no. Paul is Gaz there. Can he answer that? I'm sold those. And yeah, Dave, you were in one of them, but I think this one we put up there as a commercial because this is early in our YouTube and then it got paid to get all the views, like, but it had nothing to do with us because it was so early in our YouTube. We didn't have like any rules to doing that kind of thing. But okay. yeah, your other sales guy I used to say, sell that stuff got it yeah he that's that makes sense the bubbly gang's libel at, at any time could hijack an entire company for like a five cent ad like that was how he rolled sign my name on contracts doing that uh last one gary how do content contracts work with our employees yeah so i guess well I, what I, well, I found this one interesting because it seems that now are you giving a lot of people just like six monthers and it's like hey prove yourself I mean, no, it, no, there's nothing different. The contracts have worked the same way for a long time. And I've explained it 
a ton, especially if the caller daddy stuff. We sign people depending on how popular or followings or whatever the price can range. And, you know, it can be a year, two years, three years. We revisit after a year how you're doing. And they're like athlete contracts. You know, if you perform, we we pay more. Gotcha. That's why I, I just wasn't sure with, with some of these new people you bring on where it's like, yeah, I'll take a chance on you. I'll roll the dice. We'll take a chance, but then I don't think we've done six months. No. Ever. No. Okay. We try to give people enough time to, you know, sink or swim. All right. That's all I got. Anything you got here? What's the, uh, any breaking news that, that nobody knows about yet? No. Um, I got to eat some lunch, stop raining. So that's good and continue grinding. And you'll be back in the office on Monday. You said most likely Monday or Tuesday. All right. So the people should be on high alert. We'll, we'll high out. alert. And then uh, maybe traveling somewhere else after that, right? No. Where am I going after that? I think we're getting ready for a launch. No. Yeah. Oh, when that's ready, of course I'll be ready. There we go. Um, all right, Dave. Thanks. Uh, that's it for today, everybody. Thank you for listening. We'll be back next week. We'll see you then. Okay. 